Ineos and Jumbo are already arguing. Bike Exchange pays a hilly stage for Gronovech and, and Trek keeps Schoens in prison. This is the Criterium de Dauphiné. Kicked off on the Sunday, early finish today. And there's barely any pure sprint stages in this race. If at all, it's a really hilly parkour, although only a couple of proper mountain stages. The first one, 192 k's long, finishing in Beauchastel and on the Rhone, I think. It does a circuit, and the last climb they do, the Côte de Chambon de Bavar, it's about 10 k's, 5% all up, with a little break in the middle. So, yes, it crests about 31, 32 k's to go from the finish, but 10 k's, 5%, is no joke, but it would need to be paced hard by a team to get rid of the likes of Gronovech and Bauhaus, who we have here. Break up the road, Yumbo offering just one rider, Chris Harper, to sort of maintain the gap, and Bike Exchange sending forward a lot of resources. They've got Gronovech in here on a parkour that doesn't really suit him. He doesn't get over climbs particularly well, certainly not like Hayter or Van Aert. For GC, we got second in the Tour de France last year, Jonas Wingergott. We got fourth in the Tour, Ben O'Connor. Third in La Vuelta, Jack Haig. And of course, Primoz Roglic here. So it's most of Jumbo Visma's Tour de France squad uh, with Roglic and Jonas here, as well as Wout Van Aert. The main difference seems to be Harper here in for Dennis, who's going to Tour de Suisse. So they're pacing, and it starts to get a little bit more serious in the lead up to that final climb. Trek moved to the left. I'm like, who they got for GC? Are they going for Tiberi GC. Ineos move up. Hayter's not there. They sort of I guess riding to protect Gagan Hart's position. He's probably their GC guy, although I hope Dunbar just goes rogue and rides for himself. Enric Mars here for Movistar. He'll be hoping for a top three at worst, I think. And the break had two minutes going into that climb, but it, it's lined out from the base. And it's Kenny who absolutely lights up this climb. King Kenny. And he drops almost immediately uh, Sagiv Colliani as well for bike exchange. It's supposed to be a decent climber. And Van Danabiel, who was like the strongest rider in Ronde Lizard 2020, a climbing GC prospect, dropped. And already one of the first sprinters under pressure with, that's not 2Ks left in the climb. It's more than 2Ks proper left in this. And you see Durbridge was looking back. Gronovec and struggling on the climb with Antoine Tolhook. He might have moved to Trek, but his job today was still to pace for Wout Van Aert for the win. He was pacing hard on the front, keeping it going after Ellison. Then it wasn't looking good for Gronovec. We've got a short plateau, which Tolhook is about to reach here, where, yes, it seems to ease off a little bit as they start to go five wide, filling the road once again. But it's a minute, and they haven't even finished the climb yet. It kicks up again, like 4.5Ks, 5%. GC Geshka, second at Romandy, attacks. Honoré then counters, because Trek had run out of men. They burnt Schoens and uh, Bernard and Ellison. Then it's Yumbo sending a few riders forward to control, but not do too much. It's really Ineos who keep Gronovec and behind, and he climbed just a little bit better. Like, the bike exchange pace line after this to the finish was really good, and Kvyakovsky kept looking behind, and he's just such a smart rider. He, I think he might have heard or seen there was a split, probably in front of Cavagna on the descent, and he's probably looking, is, is Van Aert on the wrong side of it? Do I really need to go? He's just always just knows what's going on, Kvyakovsky, invaluable domestique. And you see, actually, Jumbo Visma and... Uh, Gagan Hart, Patron Gagan Hart, he's sort of in Norway telling people what to do as well, saying to Jan Bavisma, come on guys, you got Wout Van Aert for the stage, like yes we have Hater, but we're not doing all the work, and Jan like me, eh, not going to pull right now, Trek go to the front, the gap's now down to a minute, it's falling quickly, Ganner's not been used to pull, he's wondering what's all that shenanigans going on up front, I don't want to get involved in that fisticuffs hanging at the back, 48 seconds with 12 k's to go, and if it keeps dropping at this rate, 40 seconds? Bike Exchange are going to come back with Gronewegen and Bauhaus. Now, they might be extremely tired. They drop back uh, Grmai to start pacing. 28 seconds, 10 k's to go with Ella Sand against a full train behind. But then, I think for Bosenhagen, Total Energy start pacing. Yumbo send a couple of riders forward. And Bike Exchange just run out of steam for Gronewegen. And Groves would have been the man for this stage. Groves would have been perfect. A lot of pressure on Jasper Sturven here. The team Trek has invested a lot on that climb, looked the race up. Skerns and co. who can attack on those sort of climbs, not been let go using a sort of defensive role. Quick step moves to the front. They got no sprinter. Well, they got Steinler, but this ain't Tour of Slovakia prologue. So I was like, what, what are you up to? What are you, what are you guys trying to do? They attacked with Honoré. They're being tricky. You see here, Kwiatkowski. He's moving up late, 12, 1,900 metres to go. He's tasked with the unenviable task of moving up Ethan Hayter late in the sprint stage. And he's got Hayter just sort of off the wheel. And you see Hayter, 
You just don't flow through the way Kwiatkowski does. Kwiatkowski goes around, probably is that honore and squeezes through, and then Hayter's sort of waiting to get back. Kwiatkowski looks back, looks back again, looks back a third time, hands off the bars now. Now he's not happy, I don't think, Kwiatkowski, and he uh, slaps his butt to say, come on, on me butt. But they do move up, no worries. Kwiatkowski and Hayter, whilst uh, Cavania attacks with 1,500 meters to go. Sweeney, I think, was thinking about following it too. Laporte closes and stops, and that's stopping... Kind of lets Ghana move up two on the left. Kwiatkowski's moved up Hayter really nicely. He's next to Wout, but on the left-hand side, Ghana moves up, and he just rips this at like 63 k's now. So if you weren't in position before this, your race is over. Sean Quinn was nicely on Van Aertswil the whole time. He was really in a good sit the entire stage. Or the last sort of two kilometers, Sturvens moved up half in the wind, half not. Jostling for Hayter's wheel. It looks like he might have Van Aert boxed here. The problem for him is... It's a slight left-hand bend finish, so Hayter goes the shortest line, opens his sprint up after Kwiatkowski's lead out with like 250, pretty early to go, but Van Aert has to come out of the wheel really quickly too to get around him around the long way on this bend and beats him, Hayter, by nearly a bike length. Hayter second, Quinn coming late, but he was in the draft the whole time, so Hayter's sprint was you know, better than Quinn's, but still, I didn't know Sean Quinn could sprint like this, like crazy sprint from him. Uh, Van Aert says, thanks for the team. Uh, domestiques today, yes, but really appreciate it. Um, another W on my world tour, Palmares. Could you do it again tomorrow, please? So Van Aert takes the stage and the yellow jersey and 10 bonus seconds ahead of Hayter, Quinn, Page, Bosenhagen, Sturven, 6th. He came 10th, I think, at a ninth out of 9 in Omloop Bunch Sprint, 15th in Kerner Sprint. Like, anyway, <laughs> free scones. Let's go and have a crack on the climb. I say Venturini, 7th, Archils, 8th, Tomar, Ninth and Steimler tenth. Here's what Van Aert had to say after the stage. Uh, if you look to the profile today, you could expect some uh, hard final. Uh, was a lot of teams were interested in uh, dropping a few sprinters, and uh, yeah, I could hang on and uh, felt uh, felt good for the sprint. So really nice. Yeah, how comfortable were you? First of all, on the climbs and then in the sprint. Uh, on the climbs, yeah, let's say quite comfortable. Normally, it, it suits me when it's a harder final like this. Uh, but then in the sprint, still uh, guys like Heater you have, uh, you have to beat, and uh, he's, he's doing great this season. So um, yeah, it was tough to to pass him, but uh, in the end it, uh, it happened. So happy. It's important for you to win a sprint, uh, especially in your possible quest for a green green jersey on on the tour. Yeah, well, uh, also that, but also I think after the spring, I, I was a really great spring season, but. I was not really always happy with the feeling in the sprint and uh, it's definitely something where we tried to work on the past couple of weeks and uh, if it pays off immediately it's always uh, a good feeling. Tomorrow looks like a pretty similar stage, like a climby sprinty boy stage with some long climbs, maybe breakaway has a bit more of a chance, like will Yumbo want to take it up, will they defend Wout's yellow jersey, it's a stage that suits him, it's a stage that suits Hayter, will Ineos want to invest as much, if Yumbo aren't helping them, should be a good one tomorrow, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you then, ciao.